Hello, I think I'm live. <laughs> okay, I think I'm live. I hope everyone can hear me if you're watching uh, later on. Um, today, uh, I got a little bit later start than I wanted to, but today I want to talk about um, avoiding the three common downsizing pitfalls. And pitfalls, I would say, are ways that you get stuck in your downsizing process and the whole downsizing journey. Um, so I just want to kind of touch on some of those. And if you have questions after the fact, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I will respond to them um, as I see them. Um, so the first one I would say is underestimating the emotional attachment. Um, you know, your sentimental items, things that mean a lot to you, um, they can really slow down the downsizing process. You kind of almost get frozen in making a decision of what to do with um, um, these these items, and it's normal. I mean, these things bring a lot of emotion, and then they, you then you get overwhelmed in the emotion, and then you kind of stop the whole decluttering process. So it's definitely normal. And what I would say first, the best way to kind of start that is recognizing your emotions first, recognizing that this item, whatever it is, that's important to you is bringing an emotional response to you. Um, and take the time when you, when, I, when you go through that, take the time to reminisce, acknowledge the memory, um, the emotion with the memory, and consider, um, if it's smaller items, consider making like a memory box that you can bring to your new space if it's smaller items or um, journaling, even journaling about the um, journaling the item about the item and the and why it's sentimental to you. Sometimes just writing it down, taking a picture of it. If it's something big that you cannot bring to your new space, um, consider wh whether you want to give it to another family member. Um, sometimes then that kind of gives you some relief. Or if it's something that is too big or no one necessarily wants it, um, you can take a photo of it. And then what I like and I love to see in new spaces is you almost have this photo wall in your new space of these sentimental items. So if, if they're big or if they, they don't fit, you have this beautiful photo memory wall um, that you can make in your new space. <clears throat> One of the other things I would say with the emotional attachment is just seeking support and knowing that you're not alone um, in the journey, um, involving your family, involving your friends. Um, you know, if you know you're planning on moving and you've kind of gotten things lined up, you have um, an idea of where you're going to go, um, consider inviting your family and friends over and just having a cozy evening with your kids. Um, sit around, talk about the cherished item, talk about whatever it is, a, you know, a rocking chair or a, a photo book or um, something that someone gave you that's important to you. Just verbally talking about those memories with your family, laughing about the memories, I think is a great way to just move beyond that emotional side and just kind of bring you comfort that way. Um, I definitely think it's important to get professional assistance too. If you're really struggling with the emotional side and it's affecting your mood, um, considering, uh, you know, a professional meeting, whether it's a, um, a therapist, a social worker, someone that you can discuss your feelings about, um, about moving the whole downsizing, um, some, a professional and a mental health professional, um, which I recommend. I think everyone <laughs> Um, should have someone that they can go to and talk to and communicate your feelings towards. Um, there's also the op ability to almost have like a farewell celebration, a farewell of like, um, again, getting your family together, um, parting with these items, sharing your stories, inviting people to celebrate, um, you know, your downsizing experience with you because it doesn't always have to be sad you know the if you are downsizing senior living community smaller home assisted living you know it doesn't always have to be something that's negative you know you can celebrate like yay i don't have to you know 
clean this whole house anymore. I don't have to pay all these people to do these things for me. I have a smaller home. I can take care of it myself. It's a celebration of your really continuing your independence, um, if you think of it that way. So that's the first one um, where people get stuck in the downsizing process, emotional, um, underestimating the emotional attachment and just like realizing, going into it, realizing that um, it's going to affect you and be ready for it. And you can be ready for it. I would say the other one is, pro pro the second one is pro procrastination and overwhelm. A lot of the times I see clients, they delay downsizing. Oh, next month I'll start. Or next month I'll decide what I have to do. Uh, not today. I can't think of that today. Next week. Or they just kind of continue to delay it um, because they feel so overwhelmed and they don't have a plan in place. And that's where I come in is I help you plan your down whole downsizing journey and um, really personalize it because everyone's is different, right? You know, not everyone's going to fit into a certain mold of the perfect home and the perfect um, journey and all run smoothly. You know, it really is personalized. And so the best way, in my opinion, for procrastination is to have a plan and personalize that plan and then actually take action. Um, so a lot of the times, even just short 30 minute sessions where you can just sit down and de decide, okay, I'm gonna, for example, for the decluttering phase of downsizing, today I have a plan to declutter this closet. You know, I'm not gonna have anything in my way I'm not gonna have any interruptions. I'm gonna work for 30 minutes, almost like treat it like an appointment. And I'm just like, you have scheduled this block on your in during your day to do it. Um, keep it fun, keep it short, use a timer, uh, listen to music when you're doing it. <coughs> Excuse me, hire someone to help if you can't reach things or a neighbor um, a friend, a relative, um, just work in these like little bursts of time and you have a plan to kind of um, tackle a space that, you know, whether it's a week, a month, whatever, as long as you start taking action, the more you take action and actually start, um, you will see a world of difference after just a short amount of time. <laughs> Excuse me. And then the third thing where people get really stuck in downsizing is not seeking and leveraging professional support. Um, I think a big misconception is that you have to go through the downsizing process alone and um, it's just you and you have no help. And professional guidance from someone like, from a personal downsizer, or someone like me who can support you and coach you through it, um, that has worked with clients. I've seen their struggles. I've seen where they get hung up. I know how to navigate um, and get around certain obstacles. Um, and I'm trying to think of a um, recent success story. There was a lady um, where she she knew she had a lot of stuff in her home and she just was frozen and didn't know where to start. And so what we did is we picked a closet. She had three bedrooms. I said, okay, we're gonna pick a closet. We're gonna start. We're literally gonna go through each pair of clothing in this closet. And we're gonna say, are we gonna keep it? We're gonna do our piles. Are we gonna keep it? Are we gonna donate it? Or are we gonna trash it? And just the actual just starting and beginning, just actually starting, you should have seen how much we got done in an hour's time. And she was amazed. She's like, oh my God, I didn't realize that we would get all this done. And I'm so glad that we started. And, you know, a lot of the times these items you haven't seen or used in years. And so sometimes it's an easy, quick, like, oh yeah, that doesn't fit me. I'm never going to fit into that. Okay, donation. You know, and just getting started and actually taking action is really the hardest part. But if you have someone, a professional behind you, 
to lay out that plan, to get you started, to get you motivated, um, that's when you know you really are will be successful in your downsizing journey. So uh, again, just to recap, um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, the three things where people, um, the three downsizing pitfalls, you could say, where people get stuck is underestimating the emotional attachment to items that you may not expect. So be ready for it. Um, procrastination and just being overwhelmed. So having a plan in place, what you're going to do to tackle this, the, almost like a roadmap. And then three, leveraging, not leveraging professional support. So having a professional behind you, supporting you, coaching you, um, guiding you, showing you what to do is definitely where um, where you can get support and um, you can be then successful in your downsizing journey. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I, if anyone has any questions, please definitely put them down below and I will answer them. Um, and yeah, I wish you well. Happy holidays.